Welcome back to our video series Demystifying 5G, where we in the recent videos discussed uh, 5G in our network coverage measurements. So last time we just measured uh, uh, one carrier and one SSB block within that carrier and I uh, finished with the question, is it allowed to have uh, multiple SSBs being transmitted within the carrier bandwidth? And if you ask that question, of course, the answer is yes. So I have an example here for you that we can take a look at uh, coming from the standard. So you see here uh, the carrier uh, uh, that has a certain bandwidth. For instance, if we still think about our example for sub six gigahertz uh, transmitting at 3.5 gigahertz, you can see that uh, this could be a 100 megahertz wide carrier. Um, uh, BWP stands here for the bandwidth parts, uh, which is an essential uh, feature in 5G and R compared to LTE. So mobiles will be assigned with bandwidth parts, bandwidth parts up to four bandwidth parts uh, as an example, uh, can be assigned to a mobile, they can use different numerologies. So I think that's an interesting topic for another video in our video series. But uh, back to the uh, original question, you can see here in the example that has been discussed in, in standardization meetings, you see multiple SSBs uh, transmitted throughout this carrier. So what is that good for? Why is that uh, a possibility? Why can that be configured? Well, the SSBs could not just be used for the initial synchronization, um, then also in the identifying as an example if system information are broadcasted within the cell and not or not. Um, they are also good for general uh, quality uh, estimation uh, measurements that the device can do um, on these SSBs and so forth. So that's why this is a, is a valid configuration. So if you look at that, uh, what would be needed, of course, um, the, the frequencies, where are these SSBs are transmitted at? And then, of course, the same information that we discussed earlier, uh, the mapping pattern, the periodicity for those SSBs and so forth. The question is, could we detect that with our scanner? And I will show you that right away on our software. The answer is yes, but let's take a look. So uh, as you can see, we are back here with the Romus DriveTest software and uh, the signal configuration that I'm uh, uh, I set up with the vector signal generator is now that I have uh, four SSBs transmitted throughout the uh, carrier bandwidth. So the only thing I have to do is I adding here the channels, as you can see four, I'm setting the frequencies correctly. Um, and then I'm using again the pattern, uh, the mapping pattern. Again, it's at 3.5 gigahertz. We're using 30 kilohertz as a numerology in the example. So uh, uh, I stick to uh, case B. Uh, I gave it the same periodicity for each of these uh, SSBs being transmitted in um, my channel bandwidth. Uh, so I kept it simple by uh, these four and we will see like now the measurement results uh, will list those frequencies and we trying to find and detect SSBs uh, indices that are transmitted on these uh, particular frequencies. So let's hit OK. Um, the configuration is loaded and we fire up the measurement. And if we have set everything correctly, then um, uh, our measurement will start and uh, the SSB or measurement results will be uh, transmitted. So clearly here you see now in our uh, uh, top end view the different frequencies. Yeah. Um, I can then of course list them from low to high or high to low, whatever I prefer. And now you see that on each of these frequencies I detect two, two SSB uh, indices. So what I basically did on my signal generator is I set up that signal, I uh, transmit four uh, SSB uh, uh, areas throughout the signal but on each of those, I just decided to transmit now uh, two SSB uh, indices, and that's clearly what uh, our scanner measures here. So you see now, it's not only uh, um, uh, one frequency, it's uh, actually four. Like I said, we measure per index, again, the RSRP, SINR, RSRQ. We display that here uh, per index, and then also my bar chart would, would show that. Um, and I did something simple here as well. Uh, the standard allows the flexibility here that uh, each of these SSB would have an own physical cell identity. I just stick to the uh, original one. Both are valid configuration. And of course, you need a scanner and a software uh, to measure and detect that and distinguish between the different um, SSB blocks. Something that easily can be done with the uh, Roland Schwartz TSME 6 Ultra Compact Network Scanner, just been recently uh, updated to support 5G and R for network coverage measurements. Um, which we just demonstrated here in this video, in our video series, Demystifying 5G.